Ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished uh, chairs, I'm uh, honored to speak today and uh, especially like to thank the organizers and uh, Zaza for inviting me um, to talk about uh, what I think is a very novel and important topic. Uh, uh, you recognize this uh, 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 first from uh, Amos, should two walk together except they have agreed upon from uh, Zaza's talk in the beginning of the session. And uh, I'm maybe looking at it in the reverse or the opposite way. So again, cancer and heart failure, uh, but looking at uh, the increased risk of cancer in patients with already established heart failure. And these are the causes of death, and you, uh, uh, of course, recognize that, uh, how does this work? But uh, cancer and heart, heart disease are competing uh, uh, as the major causes of death, uh, of death these days. And maybe they are uh, uh, connected and not just uh, mere occurrence. And, and uh, uh, when I started uh, thinking about this, uh, sitting in the uh, heart failure clinic and evaluating patients before heart transplant. And as you know, patients that have uh, cancer in the last five years are uh, uh, ruled out for uh, transplant. And I noticed that many of my patients are being uh, ruled out on this, uh, uh, for this cause. And I started thinking maybe, uh, maybe there's something there. And if you look at the causes uh, of uh, death in patients with established heart failure, you can see that many of the deaths are non-cardiovascular uh, uh, deaths, uh, more in the patients with preserved ejection fraction, but also in those with reduced ejection fraction here. So are cancer and heart failure linked together? And is it important? I'll try to answer these questions. And this is the, uh, the paper I was uh, lucky enough to, uh, to uh, publish in JAK. And uh, it happened because of the help of two uh, uh, contributors. First, uh, uh, Yoriv Gerber, uh, who is an uh, epidemiology uh, specialist from uh, Tel Aviv University. And the uh, second is uh, Veronique Roger, uh, who uh, was the mentor, and I, I worked together with him. And quite quickly, within a few months, we were able to summarize this uh, data. Um, utilizing uh, this uh, robust uh, epidemiological uh, uh, project, this is the Rochester Epidemiology Project. Uh, this is the area around the, the Mayo Clinic uh, uh, for which we have a, a uh, epidemiology uh, information for a, a decade now. And uh, utilizing uh, this information, uh, we uh, designed this project. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, two designs. First is a case control uh, design. Uh, so uh, 960 patients with heart failure, and then we matched uh, community controls uh, to these patients and looked at the uh, uh, prevalence of cancer at the time of heart failure diagnosis, okay? Next, we uh, uh, excluded all the pairs that uh, either the heart failure or the control had uh, cancer, and we looked at the incidence of cancer. Is, it, is there more occurrence of cancer later on during follow-up? Uh, these are the characteristics, and of course, the heart failures are different from the controls, and we tried as best as we could to look at all these uh, different variables and match them later on. And these are the results. So at the time of heart failure diagnosis, there was no difference uh, uh, in the prevalence of cancer. 22 to 23 uh, percent uh, had cancer. However, during follow-up, there was an increased uh, uh, incidence of uh, occurring new cancers about 70% more in the heart failure population. And this is how it looks uh, graphically. You can see that there's a lag period uh, point here. So from the time of heart failure diagnosis, it takes about a year and a half to two years until these uh, uh, graphs uh, diverge. Later on, they merge, but this is a, a more a, a statistical issue with less numbers at follow-up here. We looked at the difference between a, 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 a time of diagnosis, earlier the diagnosis before 1990 and after 1990, and most of the difference is after 1990, as you can see here. 
these are the cancer types, and these were all, all around the place. So there was not one specific cancer type, uh, digestive, uh, male reproductive, hematologic. We could not differentiate one uh, specific cancer type. How about the risk of death? As you know, patients with heart failure die, and they die more. So is it important to also have cancer? And the answer is yes, it is. Uh, it's important to, ha uh, uh, to have cancer, even if you have heart failure here, uh, the uh, increased risk of death is about 50% more. So this was the first publication, and uh, I, there was nothing else in the literature yet uh, about this topic. And um, I was very happy to see that uh, uh, last year in the ACC, just uh, opposite the board where I presented, uh, there was this uh, Danish uh, uh, group that uh, uh, present their data. I didn't see it in a paper mode yet. Uh, over 9,000 patients, and again, an increased risk of cancer, about 40% more. But this was kind of a diverse group. This is com community controls. It's very hard uh, to, uh, to look at all the, uh, the, the uh, contributing factors. So, and uh, one of the uh, critiques was that maybe uh, there's a difference uh, in, in risk factors. So we looked at um, uh, this different uh, group. This is yet unpublished data. Uh, these are all uh, myocardial infarction survivors. And we looked at uh, uh, just over 1,000 patients. 21% uh, 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 developed heart failure, and uh, uh, 79 did not develop heart failure during follow-up. <coughs> again, these are the patient characteristics. Uh, again, they differ, but uh, not as remarkably as the uh, previous group. And uh, we could uh, kind of uh, uh, look at the different uh, 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 variables and uh, uh, match those. Most notably, uh, these patients uh, with heart failure were older, and they had a, a more uh, Charleston comorbidity index uh, scoring, uh, so they were sicker, of course. So what's the association of heart failure with subsequent can, uh, cancer risk? Uh, um, the time of diagnosis here is important. Heart failure was diagnosed early, about three days uh, median uh, after the MI. And cancer was diagnosed later, uh, about uh, 1,000 days after diagnosis uh, of, uh, of uh, MI. And we had long follow-up. It's almost five years of follow-up. And this is the association, and uh, it's quite similar. Look at this adjusted number here. Again, about 70% more cancer in patients with heart failure, as opposed to those that did not have heart failure. And uh, this is adjusted for age, sex, and Charlton. And if you adjust even farther, you get about the same results, 95% more cancer in this group. Does it matter if it's heart failure we've preserved versus uh, reduced ejection fraction? It, it appears to uh, make a difference, although we had uh, evident, uh, uh, echocardiogram only for 70% of the patients. But look at this, almost all of the difference in patients with reduced ejection fraction. Almost nothing in those with the preserved ejection fraction. And again, this is adjusted. These are the leading cancer types. Again, nothing very specific here. No difference between the groups. And this is in a graphic mode. You can see here, again, about one and a half to two years of a lag period, and then the uh, graphs uh, diverge with the uh, increased incidence of cancer in patients with heart failure. How about the risk of death? Again, if you have heart failure and you also have cancer, you're, you have increased case of death, uh, uh, 3.9 of hazard ratio. So this is, of course, the million-dollar question. And uh, in this kind of uh, 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 population-based epidemiological studies uh, are not designed to answer these questions of the possible causes. But I can, I can make some uh, fair adjustment, uh, uh, assessments. Is it a detection bias? 
of course, these are heart failure patients. They get more attention from the physicians, so maybe we're just uh, 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 finding cancer earlier. Um, against it uh, is the time, time lag. You would assume that most of the evaluation would be done early with heart failure diagnosis and not late. And also we did some exclusion analysis and did not find this to be an important uh, cause. How about shared risk factors? Um, ag against it is the, the prevalence was similar at the time of uh, heart failure diagnosis as I showed you before. Could, be, could it be a problem with healing and regeneration or with telomere shortening? Could be, but again, the prevalence was similar at the time of diagnosis. Is it medications? Maybe. Uh, I don't have enough data, and it's almost blasphemy to say anything about against ACE inhibitors or any of the heart failure medications. We need more evaluations uh, uh, to look at this. Radiation, uh, it takes probably longer for radiation to cause uh, cancer than uh, uh, one or two years. And this is my favorite uh, uh, possible cause. It probably has to do something with the heart failure physiology. Either the inf increased inflammation, the uh, tissue hypoxemia, or the hormonal, neurohormonal activation that may uh, 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 cause some of these uh, cancers to uh, 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 arise in heart failure patients. So in conclusion, prevalence of cancer in newly diagnosed heart failure patients is similar to controls. The incidence of uh, subsequent cancer diagnosis is approximately 70% higher. Patients who develop heart failure after MI have an increased risk of cancer, and heart failure seems to precede cancer diagnosis after MI. Cancer in heart failure is associated with increased mortality. And therefore, uh, the implication, I think, at least we should adhere to the current recommendations on cancer surveillance in our heart failure uh, patients. Maybe we should even be more stringent. And we should try to be as holistic as we can uh, when treating uh, uh, patients and heart failure uh, patients in uh, particular. So thank you very much.